I'm talking about K2 supplement today. Dr. Paul Hader, Master Herbalist, get healthy now. Hi, Dr. Paul Hader here. I'm talking about K2 supplement. This happened to be Cal brand, but any brand is K2 is K2. And these are little white capsules of uh, a particular type of K2, MK7. And it's powerful stuff. There's a, it's a powerful anticoagulant. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it also helps with heart disease, osteoporosis, uh, depression, helps with testosterone, helps with uh, fertility, all kinds of different things. And I'll be getting into dose at the end also and where you can find it and all kinds of different things. A lot of it comes from uh, a lot of plant sources. You know, I'll be getting into if you need to take this or don't need to take this because a lot of people are taking this and they may not need it at all. And it does have side effects, especially if you're taking warfarin or something like that. And it's made from green, green leafy vegetables, you know, lots of kale and that type of thing. And then natokinase uh, from soy. Uh, some of it is also being synthetically made now. And uh, the actual natural ones last longer so they're better for you to keep you uh, you know actually better health but uh you can actually make it yourself in your body what causes low to low k2 in your body well first of all intestinal problems you know irritable bowel syndrome inflammatory bowel syndrome all kinds of different absorbing problems can have problems with that gut problems in general uh, you know, can pro cause problems. A poor diet, of course. <laughs> it's the number one thing I see all the time is poor diet. And health problems with liver disease, uh, all kinds of gluten sensitivity, uh, celiac disease also, where you don't get enough, you know, uh, actual types of good whole fiber in your body because you don't get the probiotics growing. That's the most important thing. Also, medications will kill off everything. I'm going to get into why the, this is important. Your gut health is really important for making K2. And there's about 14 different types of vitamin K. And there's K1, which everybody knows about. K2, which is more profound. And K1 is more linked to, you know, anticoagulant acti activity. It helps, K2 helps with osteoporosis and the calcification of bones and also uh, preventing calcification of the greater arteries and also helps with preventing kidney stones. It activates a calcium binding agent of two different types of proteins. And a three-year study also showed uh, 244 menopausal women found that uh, K2 um, slowly decreased age-related bone mineral density problems. So that's a really big deal. Uh, osteoporosis is running, running rampant, and I know why also. Also, as another study with K2, it showed that if you were taking it, it reduced spinal fractures by 60%, uh, reduced non-spinal fractures by 81%, and uh, hip fractures by 77%. Wow, big deal. We have... A lot of women with all kinds of osteoporosis, even men now too. And uh, I can tell you, I'll get towards the end. I'll leave a little bit for the end because uh, I'm telling you how you can get away from having this in general. Another clinical uh, study actually showed taking 180 milligrams. This is uh, 100 mi uh, micrograms, 180 mi micrograms, I mean, for three years and improved bone strength and loss of uh, vertebral height. You know, as people have osteoporosis, they get shorter. Well, you can actually keep your height if you take K2. So really important. Also prevents atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries and prevents uh, kidney stones and that type of thing and calcifications in the uh, blood vessels in your body in general. A 10-year study at Rotterdam actually showed that a 57% lower risk of dying of heart disease if you take K2. Also, another 10-year study was 16,000 women and a much lower risk of having heart disease. Uh, also, another study would take 
taking 10 micrograms every day uh, actually has reduced the heart disease problem by 9%. So very interesting. I find that was very interesting. Also another study for 10 years, intake of vitamin K2, lessened heart disease, uh, artery calcification by 52%. So very interesting. And those with kidney disease, if you have chronic kidney disease, you might want to be taking K2 because you have a higher possibility of coming down with calcification of your greater vessels in your body. So that's in one population that could use K2. Dental health, <coughs> excuse me, I'm really not sure about whether it actually helps with the uh, bone growth inside the teeth or not. It may. We uh, have some preliminary studies that show it could help. It doesn't help the enamel on the outside, but the bone on the inside, yes. And also probably the bone of the jaw, upper jaw and lower jaw also. Also, uh, it helps lots and lots of different types of things. One thing is antibiotic use, you know. Probiotics are important for production of K2. From K1, we go to K2. Of green leafy vegetables to K2. And we need to get rid of antibiotics for in general because they kill off all the good bacteria which are doing the uh, transition from K1 to K2. Uh, they convert K1, the green leafy veggies, to K2. Of course, most people are not eating enough green leafy veggies. I eat a half pound of veggies, uh, green leafy veggies at one sitting myself. <laughs> Fermented foods like sauerkraut and kimchi are also important for the uh, connection from K1 to K2, and people are not eating that also. Antibiotics are a culprit, and people take way too many of them, and of course it kills off their microbiome and all the good back bacteria, all the good probiotics, and uh, not good. Now, of course, you're not having enough K2 in your body. Also need to take it with vitamin D, and our, you know, in the old days, 100 years ago, we didn't take the vitamin D. We got out in the sun, we worked in the sun, and we ate a lot of greens and that type of thing because it's what we have, and we got it out of the garden. Also, cholesterol-lowering drugs can also lower K2, so that's another thing also. Also, K2 is anti-inflammatory, and the Journal of Nutrition and Metabolism showed that it can help with inflammation in general. Also, it, it helps with the inflammation from uh, rheumatoid arthritis, so actually getting rid of some compounds that actually cause uh, inflammation from that disease. It helps with anxiety and depression. And a study in 2016, over 10 weeks, showed that reduced symptoms of uh, depression and anxiety. Helps with diabetes. A study in 2016 for 10 weeks actually showed it uh, from high glucose, so it could actually bring it down to normal glucose. Uh, in, and that's very interesting also. Also helps with low testosterone. One study showed that 75 milligrams uh, enhanced testosterone levels. Uh, compared to control, so very interesting. Also in increases athletic performance. Uh, vitamin K2 protein allows skeletal muscle to actually pick up more glucose and use it more efficiently. Another study found that uh, a 12% increase in maximal cardiac output uh, so that you could run faster and do what you need better and when you're doing athletic uh, performance type of things. Also helps with cancer. A study in 2018 showed it reduced cancer growth, tumor growth. Also in 2019, it reduced certain agents that cause the spread of cancer. And 2008, there was a study about prostate cancer and re actually reduced the possibility of having prostate cancer by 63%. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Brain health, it's actually K1, the first uh, anticoagulant actually linked to better memory. And skin, actually, if you take K2, uh, you actually have more elastin and actually stays with you longer. And, and uh, actually, you have better looking skin, like me. <laughs> also helps with uh, preventing strokes. Yeah, of course, calcification of any blood vessel is not good, especially in your brain. And it helps with insulin sensitivity, actually reduces that. 
and helps to, like I said, prevent kidney stones. There's a lot of good plant-based sources of K2 and K1. And natokinase is one of the, or natto, which you have in Japan and China and that type of thing. You can make your own natto. Lots and lots of K1 and K2. Uh, turnip greens, collard greens, spinach, kale, broccoli, also soybeans, organic, of course. All this is organic. Carrots, uh, edaname, uh, pumpkin, and pomegranate juice, that type of thing all organic, all contain lots and lots of K1, and which can be converted to K2. Also, and that's why we see not so many problems with uh, osteoporosis in in uh, Asian countries like Japan and, and China. Also, they, because they eat a lot of sauerkraut also, and a lot of kimchi, that type of thing, that also helps with the gut health. But we're really finding more and more that gut health has everything to do with everything. Uh, actually, animal products are have a little bit of uh, vitamin K2, but not as much as what we would find in actual uh, plant-based sources. An uh, actual study in the National Institute of Health said the clinically significant vitamin K deficiency, deficiency in adults is very rare. So uh, if you you know, have something going on, it would probably be a good idea to take it. If not, you probably don't have to worry about it. Just eat right. That's probably the most important thing. Also, MK7 is probably the most active form. There's other forms also, like MK4, uh, but this is really good for bone health. Side effects, uh, those who have warfarin, taking any kind of anticoagulant is not for you, absolutely, positively. Blood thinning agents in general. If you're taking antibiotics, not for you. Uh, any, any type of drug that you're taking is probably not for you. And check with your doctor. Uh, actual dose, anywhere from 90 micrograms up to 120 is probably the average that most people would want them to take. And all of it is vegan friendly now if you buy it in the stores. And some say from 150 to 400 micrograms daily. I don't think that's really necessary. I think the really the most important thing is to eat right. You know, the gladiators, we went back into some of the graves of the gladiators in Turkey, and we looked at them, and they had really great bone health. They lifted a lot of weights. They, you know, they ate only, they ate only beans and grains. So that was really interesting. And so the and. So they had great bone health and probably they had cardiovascular fitness because, you know, they were athletes absolutely positively. Look at Shaolin monks. You know, they don't eat meat whatsoever. They eat a lot of leafy greens, that type of thing. Uh, also, they eat a lot of natto. And boy, they have athletic performance and strong bones and really great also. So if you want to... You know, take some vitamin K2. I think for some particular things that are going on, I think K2 is good for you. And a lot of different brands. You can get it at uh, Amazon and eBay, your health food store. Just about every health food store has it out there as K2. And you can look at the, uh, the ingredients and see what forms there are, too. I have to go into about an hour video about all the different forms and what they do. Basically, K7 is probably the, and K4 is probably the two most top ones that are really the most important. MK, if you get K7, uh, MK7, that is really, really good. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. And there's a little trailer that comes after this. If you want to get a hold of me, it shows my all my contact information. So have a great day. Uh, get a, uh, feel free to get a hold of me at any time. If you want to do a consult, you know, I'm really, really busy with consult these days. People want to get healthy in there, and they can. And so what gets you on the track? I ask for a $50 donation and what's make it happen. And so this 2020 will be a great year for you health-wise and on through the rest of the, you know, 2000. So have a great day. Remember God and remember I love you.